I'm going to go and see what everybody's looking at over here. My money's on lions. Lions, lions. I rate it's lions. Let's go and find out. Can't drive past lions, no matter how much of a hurry I'm in. Not without showing you ever so quickly. Excuse me, I'm coming through. Hello. <laughs> Manu, they weren't females that ran away. They were young males. That explains everything. Hello, my boy. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you for posing so beautifully for us. Hmm, no. They weren't young males. You not even I could have made that mistake with that amount of mane. And what well, they were far away and it was dark, but I'm still pretty sure it was a female. I would love to tell you which males these are. I have absolutely not a clue. Two young, very blonde boys. Beautifully blonde actually. In fact, have you been bleaching? <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Lovely surprise. I'll try and find out a little bit more about these young males. They're right at the age where it's time to leave home and set off on a really rather nomadic life until they're large enough to compete for territory. But they're at that sort of I would say three and a half year old stage. I can't tell from the other one, he's still fast asleep. Uh, at this point, they're going to have to fend for themselves, essentially. Luckily, the migration is in town, so food is easy to come by. Nancy, very regal, is he not? Just imagine what he's going to look like in three years' time. I mean, he's grown into his mane, or his mane's grown into him. That is lovely. He really is beautiful. Even with the mohawk. Huh? Mohawks look good on lions. Blinking in the what is quite turning out to be quite harsh sunlight this morning. I wonder. We chose to follow the cheetah last night, but I think, I really think that last night the lion dynamics were particularly interesting. There was lots of noise, scrapping at one point I heard. So we had to make a choice, we had to make a decision as to which cat to follow, and we stayed with the cheetah, and I'm very glad that we did. But it would have been interesting to spend time with the lions last night as well. Willow, are they at a mating age? They are certainly capable of it, and that is why, essentially, they become nomadic at this age. So whilst they're sexually mature, they are capable of mating, and they would be able to reproduce. They are, <coughs> that makes them competition, not just to other male lions, but to the dominant male lions that would think themselves the fathers in this area of these two boys. So it becomes a stage in the life where they have to move, they have to disperse, instinct tells them to do so, and if instinct doesn't get it right, then the males, the dominant males of the area will, and they'll chase them away. And whilst I think that younger male lions do get the odd chance to mate, I was trying to think of how to phrase that properly, they do get the odd chance to mate, I think it's when they manage to essentially what we would term pull a sneaky in somebody else's territory. If they happen upon a lioness in Estrus, she's not picky, she will mate with them and they'll be able to have a chance. But they won't, they are not big enough yet to actually control a territory at least not a very large one, and they'd find themselves in big trouble from the dominant male lions of the area. So it'll be another year to two before they can properly start to compete, and another three years at least before they're really properly in their prime. But could it be, would it be possible that they could father cubs? Absolutely. Proud cat and mama, lions can run, I'm not going to be silly and say very fast. At its fastest, a charging lion can cover a distance of around about 20 meters per second. That is 60 feet per second. 
that is at their absolute top speed. Um, and just just picture something or, or look at something 60 feet away and count to two in your head and just realize just how fast that is. It's something that is drummed into us as guides, especially when you start to walk out <coughs> with the animals, is just how fast a lion can cover distance if it really wants to. They, of course, cannot maintain that speed for very long. They're not creatures that are built for stamina in the same way hyenas are. And they do get, they overheat very quickly, which is why they're ambush predators, why they're social predators, so that the chase isn't prolonged, or very seldom is prolonged. Males are slightly slower than the females, and so slightly less limber, at least. Maybe not slightly slower, but slightly less limber, and they are... They're not able to run for as long as the females are. 60 feet per second. I've seen it before. You see, when you really see just how fast they can run, you actually are, it's breathtaking. A leopard could probably do it even faster. And a cheetah, of course, at top speed is the fastest big cat here. I think that male lions probably would recognize their mothers even after being away from the pride for a long time. Their mothers aren't going to be very happy to see them though. Um, females, especially females with cubs, the last thing they want in their lives is a male around. They do not want that trouble and although the males might recognize their mums, they are still instinctively males at heart and if they find the mother with young cubs that they don't recognize that they haven't grown up with, there's a good chance that they will kill them. So although they might recognize them, they will find themselves not welcomed at all by the females if they happen to wander back into their natal home range and they definitely won't be welcomed by the males. So, whilst I think there is certainly a degree of recognition, I don't think it is reciprocal. Even if the mothers recognize their sons, they might even run away. The last thing they want is a fight between male lions and to be caught in the middle of it. Because when territorial takeovers happen, the females are the ones that bear the brunt. New males will kill cubs. Often, the males are so hyped up on testosterone that even if the female so much as growls at them, uh, they, they lose control and they end up occasionally killing females as well, despite it being slightly counterintuitive, because of course they need the females to produce cubs. But they're so, during that takeover time, they are so pumped up and full of testosterone and adrenaline that it makes them slightly more aggressive. Ryan, yes, these lions would absolutely. So we always talk about the fact that we're able to get so close to these animals on the, in the vehicle, in an open vehicle, because they don't see us as a threat. They've become accustomed. They've grown up with vehicles moving around them at, from a very, very early age. If I were to get out of this vehicle, if I were to present what is a bipedal form in their eyes, well, hopefully it's bipedal form. I haven't, I haven't actually had to use my legs in the last 12 hours, so I'm not entirely sure at this point. But let's say I was able to stand upright if I move towards them now they would run away I might get a growl I might get a charge um, a sort of a Whoa, move forward like that and then they'll be gone and they'll be running for quite a while especially if I get out at this at this distance if I were to walk towards them from quite a distance away and they were able to see me and I wasn't walking a direct line with clear body language intent to hurt them I might be able to sit with them at a distance but this is far too close and they'd get a shock they would get a serious surprise and they're not as accustomed to seeing people around here on foot I have heard however that um, lions in particular don't like red sugars but perhaps you should ask Brent that question